back to the week in review. We're counting down the week as we saw it here at HTV. And of course, we now move to Thursday and the state legislators, well, they're off now. The session closed and Jason DeGate was on the set here at Bayou Time. He talked about that session and also had some comments and took some phone calls. And joining us now um, by phone is a local member of our delegation uh, of the House of Representatives. Um, Mr. Joe Harrison is on the line. Joe, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for calling in. As the uh, session concludes, uh, if you wouldn't mind just giving us your thoughts on, on the session as it wraps up. Well, I think it was a tough session, as we all know. Uh, what was going on with the deficit going into the session. So a lot of hard subjects, a lot of hard issues that we had to deal with. Um, I think it's probably the most stressful and each year I think one's worse than the other, but this one I think compounded it because we had to make cuts that impacted a number of people, a number of issues and programs that hopefully we can return to once we get our state back in good fiscal order. All right. Uh you know, let me just ask somewhat of a pointed question, I guess, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that affects, I guess, our citizens here as a result of this session, if you could sum it up with just one particular bill that I guess was either the most controversial, which will maybe will have the most effect on our citizens here locally in the Terrebonne, uh, Lafourche, Assumption area. Um, naturally, it, it's, it's our coastal restoration. Uh, again, we were successful in getting the money necessary to continue the progress that we made thus far. Um, the scary thing is uh, uh, our delegation, Representative Doug, Dove, Richard, uh, Norby, Senator Shawbear and Gutro and uh, Truck Just Claire and Baldome had, uh, we had to fight to the very end to protect it because there are a number of people, it's a lot of money, so in a short uh, budget year people are looking to grab up money for their districts and right to the wire I mean if you'd have heard us two minutes ago right before <laughs> when Tony die we asked the question is there any money taking out taken out of the Morganza to the Gulf project and the uh, chairman of that committee said it was attempted in the Senate but it was defeated and I give credit to uh, the members of our delegation for making sure we got that money properly placed. Right, and uh, we, we were actually watching it live here at the studio uh, right before we went live on the air, and we saw several members of the local delegation asking that question. Uh, j just take us through those moments, at, because what would have happened had HB2 not have passed, uh, you know, at 6 o'clock right there when it was set to adjourn? Well, it would put everything in kind of a, a freeze mode and potentially brought us back in a special session. Okay. Um, because many of the projects would have been, uh, had no funding and it just comes to a standstill. So it was very important that we got HB2 through. It was unusual to come right down to the wire for it. It's, uh, again, it goes back to the idea that uh, we did not have the dollars necessary to fund many of those projects and had to cut a number of uh, projects. Okay. And uh, I, I know another issue that was uh, close to your mind because you've, you've done a lot of work on it was that of the synthetic drugs as Martin and uh, the local district attorneys around the area have also worked hard. That, that being passed, if you could kind of just give us a comment on that. I think that uh, the work that was done on that and, and I initially filed a bill and allowed Ricky Template, who is uh, an ex-police uh, officer uh, and also uh, a uh, retired now he has decided not to come back for re-election he asked if I'd allow to support him with that bill and I did it uh, it protects the the people of our state to know what the substances are to keep them off the shelf and to try to get the force of law behind this to protect our children from something they think is very innocent and it's not it's one of the most dangerous things I've seen to cause health problems to go far beyond just physical but the mental health problems that are caused are tremendous, and we're very happy that we're able to put that bill through and protect our, our citizens. Jason, could I say one more thing? Sure. There's an issue, local issue that came up, the yeah. bridge over Due Large. Okay. Uh, we did have a strategy meeting late last night in the conference calls. They had meetings today to prepare for uh, the broken uh, parts that are needed for the bridge. The engineers are in, in strategy meetings right now. 
and we're in process of making sure that that bridge is fixed as quickly as we possibly can and have the assurance of Sherry LaBosse, the head of DOTD, that that will happen very shortly. Okay, but that's not something that requires an actual legislative act to get done, just so everybody's no, sir, because, aware. Yes, because we're able to su uh, subrogate against the people who actually hit the bridge, and that's what happened. Okay. Uh, to damage the bridge. So we feel confident in uh, our ability to use our emergency funding to be able to get that done. I've been assured of that by both the governor's office and by uh, Secretary LaBosse. Okay. Thank, okay. thank you very much. We appreciate Great. it, Joe. All right. Thank you, Jason. Sure. Okay, uh, State Representative Joe Harrison, and I believe Jason Sernier is telling me we have another member of the local delegation on the line right now. That's State Representative Gordon Dove. Uh, Mr. Dove, are you there? Yes, I sure am, uh, Jason. Yeah, uh, uh, how you doing, Guardy? Uh, we appreciate you calling in. Uh, we, we saw you. We were watching uh, HB2 being debated on the floor there as things were wrapping up uh, right before 6 o'clock when it was set to adjourn. And, uh, you know, we witnessed you ask the question to make sure the efforts of uh, the local delegation and the citizens concerning Marganza was not changed. And, and uh, what was the result of HB2 being passed? Okay, well, there's $10 million in it for Morganza, and if you notice, they, opened, um, they, they wait to the very last minute to bring up HB2, so you need to ask a direct question. <laughs> did, did you keep my money in there? You know, I should say our money, Terrible Parishes and LaFouche Parishes, Morganza money, and uh, so, you know, he, he's got to answer you direct, because that, that's a last-minute deal, and that, that's when you usually lose your money, you know, so... You know, I, I, you know, we were very pleased with $10 million. We've got, we, we're looking at the CDBG monies uh, through the governor's office, so, so that's not the only money we should be getting from Morgan, but we will we'll be getting some more. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, uh, we've refunded, you know, we, we went ahead and TOPS is funded, so the TOPS program will continue to exist. And, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, everyone has a chance to go to college and, uh, and, 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 and have a career, you know, so right. that, that was, you know, that was funded and, uh, which I think is a, is a major step. We, we've always kept tops alive so, so our, our children, can, young men and women they can, of the state of Louisiana can, can go to college. And that's something very important, you know, not only statewide, but also to, to citizens here locally who require that money to, to, to go to universities such as Nichols and other things like that. Right. And, 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 you know, like this year, we didn't get our, we didn't get funds. You know, every year we usually get funds that we you can use on a local level, but, you, you know, with the uh, with, 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 uh, budgets, budgets so much in the negative, uh, you know, that, that didn't happen, but we still got... You know, we, we, we were able to still get some projects done for Terrible Parish. I, I guess some positive notes that you can give for the residents of, uh, you know, the Terrebonne, Lafouche area uh, as a result of this legislative session as you see it. What are some positive things right, that you know, came out of this session? Right. Well, you know, Jason, we weren't real happy with the redistricting at the last minute. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we 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 were, we were split up 40, 55, 45. They split up. Terrible and Lafourche are still together. It's just with the congressional district split split the parishes. Terrible and Lafourche have fifty five about fifty five percent with Scalise, and and we have uh, uh, about forty five percent of Lafourche uh, is, is is gone with the other congressmen, and. Uh, 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 I tell you what, at first I wasn't real happy with that, but after meeting with uh, uh, Scalise, who I've served four years ago, and he's supposed to put an office in Terrebonne, he assured me that he is going to represent us as, 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 if, uh, uh, as if we were 300,000 people with him. And okay. I believe Scalise, he, Representative, I mean, Representative Scalise, I should say Congressman Scalise, he's, uh, he's a man of his word, and... and I flew over the Morganza with, with, when they, with, with Steve Scalise when they were opening the gates. And, you know, he's been here the whole time making sure Terrebonne, is, is, well, Terrebonne and LaFouche were fine during, during that uh, flooding event. All right. Senator Narby Schaber is on the line. And uh, at this point in time, uh, we go to the next uh, member of the local delegation who uh, would like to call in, and that is Senator Narby Schaber. Senator Schaber, are you there? 
Hey, Jason. Yeah, how y'all doing? All right, doing, doing fine. We thank you for uh, calling in. Um, you know, the session just wrapped it wrapped up at 6 o'clock. Uh, things uh, wrapping up here. If you could give us uh, just your final thoughts or, or your overall quick summary just for the residents of Terrebonne and Lafouche Parish on uh, your thoughts on how the session uh, went this, this go around. Well, you know, it was a tough session uh, by every indication. Anytime you're going to have a budget deficit like we had, uh, you can't come out of it uh, unscathed. And uh, certainly, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be disappointed in, uh, in the outcome. I think locally we fared pretty doggone uh, well compared to some other areas of the state. Um, you know, we, we've certainly got a lot of money that uh, we appropriated towards Morganza, which is great for our levy protection. Uh, that seems to be something that this governor uh, is committed to. The strength of Representative Dove uh, on the House side uh, in pushing uh, from his chairmanship as uh, the chairman of Natural Resources has really, really allowed us to, to capitalize on some much-needed coastal restoration and hurricane protection fund. Uh, from on my side, from uh, being the vice chairman of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. Uh, as a freshman, uh, you know, being able to lobby my members uh, to support us, uh, to not oppose that money uh, being allocated to that very important project, uh, you know, I I'm real proud that we, that we were able to, to accomplish that in such a tough fiscal time. Very good. And, and, and the question I have is, uh, we had uh, Representative Harrison that joined us just a few moments ago and also Gardy Dove and they were mentioning that money from Marganza as HB2 was uh, just approved right before uh, the buzzer if you will at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. and Gardy had asked the question of whether his whether the Marganza money was still there and he was explaining that once it got to the Senate side uh, they had some amendments that were made and they were trying to take that out and he and Harrison were both saying that, that efforts of yourself and uh, other members uh, were adamant to, to keep that money in there. Um, you know, is it oftentimes, you know, is it difficult to convince people that it's important when it's not their money <laughs> and it's somebody else's? Well, you know, it, it, it's a difficult task to, to get money and bring it back home to your district. You know, so often, so often, people that are critical of politics and government uh, can throw stones and scream and, and holler about pork barrel projects or, or what is the, the new cat. You know, when back in the day, everybody used to call it a pork barrel project when you built a bridge in your district or you paved the road or you built a levee. Okay, and right. now it's in vogue to call these things earmarks, and the budgets are bloated with earmarks. Well, the people that are usually screaming from the governmental side about earmarks are usually the people that aren't getting them. And, you know, our capital outlay budget is a little on the plus side of $320 million. Uh, that's not a lot of money in a, tw in a $25 billion budget. But as you know, um, a lot of that money in our budget dedicated that has by law to go somewhere else. And our construction budget... You know, though it varies uh, in times of good economic times and in bad economic times, we will appropriate X amount of dollars for capital projects. And, uh, you know, like I said, the strength of Representative Dove and Representative Harrison, certainly, who is on the, uh, the Appropriations Committee, um, you know, th those gentlemen were instrumental. So when you're splitting up that limited amount of money amongst, you know, the... Uh, the 64 parishes of the state of Louisiana, you were always going to have some people that get left out. And we, we were really well represented in the, um, in HB2, we, uh, which is the appropriate, which is the, uh, capital outlay bill with the money from Organza. We've got over $8 million in that budget, uh, excuse me, $9 million now, uh, in that budget for Nickel State University, uh, building improvements, uh, especially the Culinary Institute. A building that they so desperately need. That program is their largest degree program and the fastest growing. And we are literally to the point where we're turning away students uh, from that valued program 
Uh, the governor has named that program as a center of excellence. The Board of Regents has named that program as a, as a center of excellence. Um, the, LS, the ULL Board has named it a, uh, a center of excellence, and that allowed us to put emphasis on constructing a new state-of-the-art culinary building for our students. Um, so we got that money in. Uh, there's always going to be money uh, for roads and bridges that uh, are, are going to be allocated. We got the commitment from the governor. Uh, I led the delegation upstairs on to, to the fourth floor for a meeting of the, with the governor in the middle of this session that got him to agree that now that I-49 North has been complete, that the further funding of LA-1 from Leeville all the way to Golden Meadow is going to be his new big highway project. Uh, we're, we're looking to put $4 million uh, towards that project wow. into the budget next year. Okay. Um, and then certainly fund it at a higher rate uh, in subsequent years. But uh, we, we did fairly well in Capitol Alley this year. But, you know, you can never underestimate how important it is for as much money that we got going to the Morgans of the Gulf Project, man. I'm there. there are a lot of places around the state that wish they had that, you know, that many millions of dollars going to hurricane protection, and, and we got it down here. Uh, also calling in on the line now is uh, State Representative uh, D. Richard, who is now on the line joining us, and uh, we want to thank him for calling in as well. Uh, Representative Richard, are you there? I am, Jason. How are you doing? Hi, doing fine. Thank you very much uh, again for your work uh, uh, over this past session. I know it's always a grind going through the process, and it concluded today at 6 p.m. Uh, if you could just give, uh, you know, the, the citizens of uh, Terrebonne and Lafouche Parish uh, your thoughts on, on the overall session. Sure, Jason. And, and you said the word. It, it is a process. You know, you got you got to play through it to, to get... Uh, back and forth between the Senate and the House. Uh, but no, House Bill 1, which is the main budget uh, that passed, and I think we're all satisfied the fact that there were no cuts, or very minimal cuts to higher education. Right. Uh, benefit the Nickel State, of course. And health care was restored, so I think everybody's happy. But, but Jason, the only concern was that K-12, to even though it wasn't really cut, it wasn't really funded like we should be funding it, you know, and that's the push we're going to have to make next year is to put more dollars in K-12. to You know, we got to make a decision if we want to keep funding public education and allow it needs to be. And so that was a disappointment. But overall, you know, this is the first time in 10 years that House Bill 1 passed unanimously. Oh, wow. And yeah, that was the first time. So that was a good thing. Uh, you know, I'm still trying to find out where was the $1.6 billion shortfall, how we answered that. Mm -hmm. I know we still use one-time monies, and, and the thing that I don't like about it is we're still grabbing fees from different departments to balance the budget. But overall, we had to support it, Jason, because it, it did uh, put money back in the budget for health care, which is dear to my heart, and, of course, higher education. So, so that was a good thing. Uh, disappointing thing was the fact that the reforms, as far as, and I know you know I had two bills that were supported by John Kennedy that we should have passed. That was a disappointing thing because this was an opportunity this year to change the way we spend in this government, and we did not do it. Three things I look at is we did not support the merger to put two schools together that we should have done, and we didn't support the two bills that, that John Kennedy supported that I had, and that was to reduce government employees and to also reduce public contracts. So that was a disappointing thing that the governor did not support. Okay, and uh, and let's talk about the reducing uh, of government employees because right. uh, I, you know I think there's some misconception there that that those in support of, of that issue are saying okay we just need to go through and start firing everybody in the government right. that's and that's that's right. certainly not the case right right we we got a, a unanimous vote in the house side and what that does Jason these, these are jobs that go unfilled every year. John Kennedy says every year there's 10 to 15,000 vacancies in state government. And so those jobs sit there unfilled and that money sits in the budget and nothing can be done with it. So he's saying if you can reduce government size by 5,000 positions for the next three years, we would save at least five to $600 million. And so that, that to me makes sense and nobody refuted it. The governor just put his clamps on it in the Senate side, and they, they voted it down. Right. So what it means is if somebody retires or leaves that position, right. it just goes on. Okay. And you do away with it. Now, the bill allowed for the commission administration, in other words, the governor's office, 
to decide which jobs would go unfilled and which ones needed to be filled by importance. That would that'd be their prerogative. So, you know, the bill, there wasn't out for the governor's people to say, you know, yeah, that position needs to be filled, let's fill it, or let's not fill it. And that's what the bill did. Okay. So we were kind of disappointed in that fact, but we're going to bring the bill back next year until we get something done with it. All right, that was Jason DeGate bringing us up to date on the closing of the state legislature. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more Friday news and also Terrebonne General Medical Center's medical segment. And then we'll bring you in the kitchen with Kanadas. It's all next. <laughs> 